it's all broke this horse, you know, myself. And he's got Fletcher's hands on him now. My son, you know, his hands on him. Um, just oh. another pair of hands, obviously, because he's got about a couple of weeks and he'll be coming home. He's got to go single yet. Um, Can't talk. But he's there, got you go out in his traffic. You know, street now, we're going to pull up outside and have a cup of coffee and then let him go home. Um, go on, boy. Go on. Good boy. Good lad. And then Melanie will drive him, you know, a couple of three times before he's ready to come home and then come across here nice, you know, over the pavement, different colours, red bricks, all that type of thing. So all in all, not bad. Bring him down here, get used to people getting around him and, and touching him and handling him. across the road here Joe in with this horse in the thing in the lead look um oh Dan okay trot get on lead up boss get away hey come on get on him Rolo boy hey 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 little canter there Right. Stand up, bossy, good lad. You just stand there on the relaxed rain. You can see I ain't holding on to him like that. Walk away, walk. Good boy. There's a problem, right? Okay, now I've got him round there where he shouldn't be. See the trace tight round his ass, round his legs. Boss, walk up. Walk on. Straighten up. Away with a job. That's what I like to see. If you do get tangled, you ain't in the shit, are you? I'd rephrase that, Joanna, sorry. If you get tangled, you know, which can happen to anybody, you won't find yourself in a position that's awkward to get out of. You know, just call his name and give him an instruction and he'll do so. So if we say to him now, in actual fact, whoa, stand still, boy, that's a good lad. And if I bring him right back on his leader reins, right back, can you see I'm pulling him right back so he's now pushing my horse's head come back, come back boss, come back stand still brother, come back boss come back you see there around his, his hills is the iron bar the spreader bar we're using a spreader um, just to show you that he'll walk up roadie one step go on, she'll come there Banging his hocks, can you hear it banging his hocks on his legs and then come out straight? Or, as I said before, if you find yourself in the shit, you can get out of it, all right. So, you see where he is here? An impossible situation, you'd say. Bring him round, walk up, boss, walk up, boss, take the lead. Good boy, so you got yourself in trouble. Good wheel, good leader, horse. Get up, boss. See, I've got him alongside, all the get up, boss, when you're told. Bossy, so you see the horse look, look right back at me. No kicking, nothing at all. If I knew which rein to pull, I'd pull it. Come round, boss. You're a good baby. Walk on when you're told, he's a good lad. Okay, so what we've got here, we've put both traces up the inside of his legs. Just to show you that if anything happens and he you know, steps over the trace, he's not going to kick. You can see he's actually pulling there, so that's riding right up, right up inside his legs. That's both traces. See them right, both the there on the inside, there. pulling the weight. So you can see that's rubbing up around his thighs full. Okay, Mel, you 
and he'll stand still there while we um, do them and sort them out again. So the whole point of doing that is just to show that he's not going to panic, you know, if anything did happen and they both went up inside his legs. Showing you that the horse won't bother him because being like a bit cultish or he's out of that now. So he'd bite that horse's ass, you know, if he still had a bit of cult in him. But he's out now, so he's like, you know, letting the horse do. And like that, if I pull Rowley over right underneath him, there, yeah, you know, put him back, torment your horse. Get up, Rowley, go straight, go straight. We've got this horse in single, we've just left home now. We've had him in tandem. We've had him out the front and in the shelves, so we go anywhere in a team. The reason we've left him in, this is your breaking, you know, single, you know, it's not a single vehicle. The team vehicle, the only reason I've put him in this, to take him up the road, is if you're ever, you know, at a show and on a bit of soft going, there's nothing worse than your horses won't pull off. So, come over darling. You've seen him with big tractors and stuff. Um, they good as gold. Reduce horse in six weeks. Single. Tandem. Lead and will. Pair. And have him safe in them positions. He's, uh, what's it now? I've got no brakes. You can see I've not using any brakes. We're downhill now. And I'm just going to ask him to stop it. Whoa, boy. Whoa, my lad. Uh, look at them, where that bridging strap in him look. Right? Now you can say to me, well, we don't no need to do that, Barry, I'll never do that. You listen to old Basil, when your brakes go, one day, and they will, you want to know that horse is going to stop. You say to me, you should never be in that carriage, Barry, that's too heavy for him. Well, I don't know about that, and I'll tell you why I don't know. We'll take one of your carriages, you know, a wagonette, comes with shelves and a pole, Takes four in the back and two on the front for a 16 hander, yeah? Well, if you get four adults in there, even four adults, plus the carriage, how much that way? People don't look at it like that. Obviously, you couldn't drive him 30 mile, could you? With this weight behind him, as he is at his age, because you wouldn't be doing him any favours. You'd make him sick and tired of working. But for a short trip like this, mile down the road, mile back, Uphill and down down on the way to our place. Well, good for him. Don't do him no harm at all. Go back. Reverse back quick. Go right back up there. Right back, let this motorcar come around. Thank you. Thank you very much. Come right on him, you see him right on his chest, look, pushing him back on his chest, come forward a bit, actually touching him, you can see, moving back but no fear. Walk, bim, bim, bim. Okay, look on. So, you know, for his age, like he ain't bad, is he? Forward on the other side there, you can see it pulling, look, the red one. Right over his ear roll and like that, which is obviously a lot better than just walking through them. Um, we've got all this old rubbish here. The point of that is it's just 
giving him confidence all the time. When you tell him to go somewhere, he goes somewhere. Well, as you can see there, he also panicked by what he's just done. He's only on a rubber bit and his mouth, that's all he's got in Joanna, is a very, very soft rubber bit. Could you just bring him here a minute, please? Oh, baby, come here, darling. Come here, boss. Thanks, yeah. So, here he is here. If you stand in front of him, I'll have a side of his mouth. If you see this, this is how soft this bit is, right? It'll roll right round the opposite way, yeah? If I bring it out, you can see there how soft it is. I can bend it. You can see I can push it in, bend it, do whatever. You good baby. Lovely. You can see the air all over his head. And believe it or not, Joanna, when that's going round, you know, and moving and flapping, if you stand in it, it does make a fair bit of noise, you know. Certainly enough for horse to hear. Well, if we can hear it, horse can definitely hear it. But you see it going round, caught up on his head, like that, yeah. See it all knotting up now where it's caught on his head around his ear hole, yeah? I see it, you can see his eye from here, look. Where have we got the blinkers right out? That's it, walk him on now then. That's lovely, thank you. And round his old blinker, look, can you see? So what Adam's gonna do now is just take him down through all these plastic barrels and cones and stuff. We had a comment, you know, from somebody on the one of our videos, I think it was, just saying that, you know, they wouldn't take their horse through cones, they'd rather they respected them and didn't go anywhere near them. Well, you know, in our opinion, the horse should go where the driver puts him, because if you're ever out and, you know, they coned off a road, it happened to us once, they're doing the roadworks down in Andover, in a queue of traffic in a single lane, the other lane had been coned off, an ambulance came past, Obviously wanted to get down onto the roundabout, the cars all pulled over onto, you know, in the gaps between the cones, which is why the gaps are there, so they could get out the way of the ambulance. And obviously we had to go over too, and as it happened, both cars in front of us had gone into the gap, we had to go right over a cone. So, you know, as a driver, it's down to you where you put your horse, and obviously to keep him away from anything that's going to hurt him, but at the same time, he's got to be confident enough and trust you to go where you put him regardless of what, you know, what's in the way of him, you know, whether it's a cone or plastic bag or anything. So you never know when something might happen and you need him to do something out of the ordinary like that. And obviously while he's walking around nice and quietly or going down the lane and everything's lovely, that's fine. But it's when accidents happen or when you've got an emergency sort of situation, that's when you need to know that your horse is going to cope with it. And that's what we try and train them for. young all stand there like that in the traffic at the lights very pleasing up behind a big old yellow thing like this the motor cars all up beside here coming um, you know on the inside of him which is very nice too it's normally that past him he don't have nothing come up his inside normally but he's coping with that nice so Oh, my God. 